that deep, devoted love? Or do you put other things ahead of him? That's the qualifier. Those who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Believeth all things. Again, brought this up in this morning's message. Things I know. I most certainly do not, though, understand all things. I don't. I mean, I, I probably barely skimmed the surface of what's contained in the scriptures in 45 years. Okay. But I absolutely believe and trust everything that the Lord has said and promised without question. Believe it, all things. Hopeth all things for the same reason. Hopeth all things. Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into His grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God, there's that word again, is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Hopeth all things, endureth all things. And we most certainly can endure all things. Because we know what the end is going to be for us. Because God is faithful. 1 Corinthians 10.13 1 Corinthians 10.13 There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. That's why we bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, and can endure all things. Because God is faithful. He's not going to put on you anything more than what He knows you have the capacity to deal with. Trust Him. Trust Him. Lord will give us the grace we need when we need it for every trial, not before, when you need it. And so, therefore, as it says in Romans 8, 37, we are more than conquerors through him that agape, love us, agape. -o. Verse 8, charity never faileth. Charity never faileth, not ever. God's charity never faileth. Christ's charity, the Holy Spirit. Okay, and if you will exercise divine love in action, it never faileth. It goes on and it says, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Yeah, prophecy failed, meaning ceased, has stopped. Once the canon of the scripture was closed with the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ, okay, that was it. There have been no new revelations or prophecies since that time. You get a lot of people out there that will tell you, oh yes, you know, you know, you know God appeared to me and told me, yeah, baloney. No, he did. And we talked about that this morning. You haven't seen Him. You haven't seen God the Father. You have not seen the Lord Jesus Christ. You have not seen the Holy Spirit of God. I mean, if you were going to see any one of the three, the Holy, you'd think the Holy Spirit of God would be the one you see. He's with you all the time, right? <laughs> You've never seen Him. Now, that's not to say that He won't speak to you like we talked about this morning. Might speak to you in a dream. Speaks to you 
through the heart, speaks to you through the scripture, speaks to you through that Holy Spirit of God. Okay, but you've never, you know, looked each other eyeball to eyeball, face to face, never heard him speak to you audibly through your mortal ears. Hasn't happened. Because okay. that would be new prophecy. That would be new revelation. Hasn't happened. Book's closed. It's done. Everything he's got for us is here. You're either going to get it from here or you won't get it at all. Tongues have ceased in general. Again, yeah, I admit, yes, Paul said, you know, forbid not to speak in tongues, okay? But again, he gave some qualifications there for that. Tongues are, were, as stated in 1 Corinthians 14, 22, given as a sign. Okay. What were signs for? How many times have I covered that? Signs are for the unbelieving Jews. Okay, that was the whole point behind tongues. You go back and you read all the instances there in the book of Acts, and it was so that they would have them as a sign for unbelieving Jews so that they would accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Okay, when God ceased working with the nation of Israel as a corporate body, tongues ceased. Quit going to the Jew as a nation. It stopped. Okay? Right now, the individual Jew, if he's going to come to Christ, is going to come the same way any Gentile comes. Okay? He's going to exercise individual faith in what God has said about his son Jesus Christ. Knowledge. Well, knowledge has most absolutely vanished away. Well, and right here again, we're talking scriptural knowledge. Okay. Very quickly after the end of the Philadelphia church. I'm appalled. I am appalled at the general knowledge or the major lack thereof of the vast majority of born-again believers. And with the end of the Philadelphia age and the beginning of the Laodicean church age, man, knowledge <laughs> like vanished almost overnight. It's incredible. And that's why so many folks can be so easily misled in the churches today. Because they don't know anything. They aren't getting anything from the pulpit. What they are getting isn't sticking they don't study it at all. They have no knowledge. They are willingly ignorant of the Bible and are content to be so. Shameful. It's absolutely shameful. Verse 9. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Now here when it's talking about prophesying, it's not talking about giving anything new. It's preaching. That is prophesying. I can give you all kinds of prophecy. The Bible's full of it. I can tell you what's going to happen in the next uh, 1,007 years. <laughs> no problem. Nobody has or ever will in this mortal life exhausted the depth and wealth of the knowledge that is contained in the Bible. Nobody. I don't care how much they knew. Not even the Apostle Paul, arguably the greatest Christian ever lived. Never going to exhaust it. Now, some who are serious, dedicated students of the Scriptures know it in part and can preach and teach it in part. Okay? I want to tell you, there's a lot of here I don't know. I keep studying. I keep at it. I keep trying to learn. I keep asking God to show me and teach me, and He does from time to time. Let me see. But nothing that hasn't been there for 2,000 years, or if it's in the Old Testament, even longer. Okay. But that is the best, okay, in part, that's the best that we feeble-minded mortal men can muster, in part. Verse 10, goes on and says, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. 
Well, the that in here is the Lord Jesus Christ. Speaking of it in a neutered sense, neutral. This happens many times through the scriptures. You know, uh, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. It's that, okay, that which is perfect is the Lord Jesus Christ. When that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. A lot of people, oh, it's the Bible. Well, yeah, the Bible in itself may be perfect, but uh, do we know everything? No. That, that doesn't work. Holy Spirit of God, it's not the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God's been here for 2,000 years. No, when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. 1 John 3, verses 1 and 2. 1 John 3, verses 1 and 2. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. Here's that word again. <laughs> that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, because we only know in part. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. When that which is perfect is come is going to be the blessed hope, the rapture. And our change. And we get that glorified, immortal, eternal body to go with our spirit and our soul. Then we'll be firing on all cylinders and we'll know no longer in part. That's why it goes on, it's, you know, there at verse 12 it says, you know, for, but then shall I know even as also I am known. That which is in part is done away with is our present limited condition because we still have this mortal flesh to contend with. Verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I could preach an entire sermon on that one verse. <laughs> I won't. I'll spare you. I'll save that for another time. But I will say this, it is high time for the majority of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ to spit the binky out of their mouths, to get out of the diapers, to gird up their loins like a man, and grow up in the Lord, and to quit themselves like men, instead of whining and crying and fussing and complaining like a bunch of little milk-sucking babies. Absolutely. Verse 12 and 13. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. That's how I know it's talking about the rapture. Now I know in part, but then shall I know him, even as also I am known. Of him. He knows me inside and out. He knows me better than I know myself. When I get to see him, then I'll know. <clears throat> now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Faith, hope, and charity. We walk by faith. That was this morning's message. Walk by faith and not by sight. We hope in confidence. Something I never had as a Roman Catholic. My hope then was, boy, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope <laughs> that I've done enough. So that, you know, maybe, just maybe, I'll 
get into heaven. And of course they teach you, you know, that to believe that you're going to heaven when you die is sinful and wrong. Nobody knows that. And we perform in charity. That's how you live your life. And charity, agape love, is indeed the greatest of those three things. Because without it, the other two, faith, hope, have no power and have no strength whatsoever to sustain us in this mortal life. You'll always doubt without charity. You'll always falter without charity. You'll always hesitate without charity in your faith and in your hope unless and until you fortify them with that deep benevolent affection that is born in the divine action of love. Charity. Heavenly Father, Lord, it's because of your charity that we've been given our hope. It was through your charity before you'd ever even created a human being that the plan was devised to provide for us a salvation that we couldn't mess up because it all rested in you and what you were going to do. And you here exhort us to have that kind of love to express charity in everything that we do. Our behavior towards you our behavior towards our brothers and sisters in Christ, and even our behavior towards this lost and dying world, because it was somebody else's charity that gave us the opportunity to hear the gospel and be saved. Faith, hope, and charity, but the greatest of these is charity. Thank you for it, Father. Amen. Let's...